In this video, we'll be making a high quality panorama in Spark AR Studio. At the moment, the highest quality texture that you can import into Spark is 1024 by 1024. When stretched to be projected 360 degrees, it ends up looking a bit like this. It's a bit pixelated. So the too long didn't watch version is that we split the panorama up into eight different sections in Photoshop then, in Cinema 4D, or any other 3D program, we create a sphere and create eight separate selection tags. The individual square textures are then used on those segments. Once imported into Spark, voila, high quality panorama using eight different 1024 by 1024 textures. Starting off over here in Photoshop with our panorama, this uh, panorama is in a equi-rectangular projection. There are a few different types of projections used for different panoramas, uh, cube maps, etc. If the panorama that you are using looks different from this one, um, you'll need to use some sort of online converter to make it equi-rectangular in order to follow along. Uh, you can tell uh, a panorama is in equi-rectangular if it's in a two to one ratio. Now, this panorama is 8,000 by 4,000 pixels, so it's a bit too big. So I'm just going to bring that down. Just go image, image size. And the size that I want to make that is 4096, 4096 by 2048. Uh, so that will make eight perfect 1024 by 1024 textures. Uh, you can split this up in all different ways, but I like to keep it nice and clean. And I think that eight is a, is a good amount. To, uh, to get that quality that we want in Spark. You could potentially just do this as two, uh, a two 1024, but I just don't, still don't think that is gonna be high enough quality. Well, now that we've got that down to size, I'm going to, over here underneath the, the crop tool, will probably be the one you see there, is a tool here called Slice Select Tool. So I'm just gonna select that, and then we just click on our image then we've got an option up here called divide so we just click on that one so we want to divide that into it's already it's already set here so you want to divide that into two uh, horizontally and four vertically and you should be able to see that it has created those uh, eight different uh, squares that we want so we just okay that and then we just need to come up to file export save for web and I'm just going to zoom out so we can see what's going on. There are our eight boxes. I'm just going to go through and then you hold down shift and just select each of them. So I want to send them all out. And then over here in the preset, I'm just going to choose JPEG high. It is make the quality 60, but I'm just going to make that a bit higher because we can always bring the uh, compression down in Spark later. And that looks pretty good. Then we just go save. And I'm just going to put that out to that uh, folder there. Yep, looks good. Save that. Okay, now if I just jump over here to Finder, we'll see the images have, have exported. There are eight of them there. 8, 10, 24 images. Just have a flick through them. Okay, yep, looking good. To set this up in Cinema 4D, the first thing I'm going to do is put in a sphere that we are going to use for our projection. Um, now I can see all my different segments of my sphere because over here in display, display I've got lines turned on, so make sure you've got that turned on, otherwise you won't be able to see the different segments. Now I'm just happy with the default settings, I'll just go with that now. The scale will be different to what you need, but you'll be able to scale it up in Spark. Uh, I'm going to press C to make that editable. And now I'm gonna bring my materials in. So down here, just go create material, new material. I'm gonna call that number one. Double click, turn off the reflectance in the color, in the texture, load image, and then bring in number one. I'm just gonna know that for now. And now I've just got to repeat that for the seven others. So I just click and drag, hold down uh, command or control, I think, on PC. Double click on that number two. I'll just go through this and do this for the next up into eight. Three, four. Go 
after we bring those other images in. Probably a quick way of doing this. If anyone knows one, let me know. Okay. All right, now all my textures are in. So I'm going to cut this sphere up into four segments around the top and four segments around the bottom. Eight segments in total, so one eighth of a sphere. I don't know what it's called. If anybody also knows that, please let me know. Um, now, my sphere, I've pressed C, I've made it editable. I'm gonna come over here. This is the um, this selection tool to select the faces. And now, you just gotta do it by eye, but the way I'm gonna do it is just gonna, not like that, I'm gonna choose my select tool. And I wanna select this. There, so that's the selection that I want. Make sure that yours is the same. And then what I can do is I can just drag my number one straight onto there. Now it won't look right just yet because the one thing we do have to tweak is click on the uh, tag up here and then choose the turn the tile to four and two. And that should look better. So now I've got to work my way around. Just come around here to this next uh, segment in my select tool that I want, and then drag number two onto there. Four and two. I can just put this on, and then I can uh, change all those tiling settings for all of the materials once I put them on. So I will do that. I'll just go through and I'll put, get these materials on here. Number three, so it will just look weird for a minute. This will be number four. Now the trick here is I do have to make sure that when I do jump down to do number five that I go back to where I started. So I need to be underneath where I started here. That's the right amount. So make sure that you get all the uh, Segments that you want to. Number five. I'm just navigating using the one, two, three keys if you're not familiar with them in Cinema 4D. Six. Seven. Okay. Now, I've got all my materials on there, but it does look a bit weird, so I'm going to select them all. And, and I didn't need that one. And then change that to four and two. Okay, so we have it. We have our panorama set up there. in eight different uh, sections. So that is ready to now send over to Spark. One thing you could potentially do if you wanted is, uh, depends how these sort of different sections come in, Comes up, it, it can look a bit blocky. So what you can potentially do is add a subdivision surface there and that will make your sphere a bit smoother. It's a lot it's, it's a lot easier to work with a limited amount of segments for when you're doing the selections. So then we can add that in there later. Before I export this, I'm just gonna click on my subdivision surface here and press C to make that editable. Um, otherwise that, that will not come across to Spark. And then we just go File, Export, FBX, and so make sure that sending out the materials, yes. 
Okay, all good. Okay. Uh, panorama, yes. Yes. Over into Spark now, and I'm going to set up two different projects just to show you two different ways of using this. First will be just a, a segmentation background. So let's go blank project. Expand that out. And then come down here, import from computer and my panorama. And because my textures were in the same folder, they have all come in nicely as well. First thing I'm going to do to stop everything from slowing down is I'm just going to select all of my textures and then click no compression. While I'm here, there's a couple of settings I'm just going to change. So while I've got them all selected, I want to change my U tiling to repeat and my V tiling to repeat both them to repeat. I will come back here and I'll tweak these compression sessions. Uh, I will come back in and tweak these compression settings later, but just for now, that is good. Now I'm going to select my eight materials. I'll leave them as flat and I want to change the tiling. So the tiling doesn't come across from Cinema 4D. So I'm going to change that to four and two. And I want to also change it to double sided. So now when I drag my panorama in, it should be nice. Now, the other thing I actually do have to do, I'm gonna set this to minus one in the X, otherwise it will be flipped. And you should be able to see, I drag that out of there, higher quality panorama than what you would normally get out of just a 1024 by 1024 texture. To chuck this person in, I'm going to click on my camera, click texture extraction and segmentation mask extraction, and then add object, rectangle, insert, come up here to the size, click there and click fill width, and then fill height, and then come down to the material, press the plus button, create new material. Be over here. There it is. Materials. Here. I'm just going to double click that and rename that person. Now, if we go into the texture and choose the camera texture, and then we click the alpha to turn it on, and then in the texture we want to choose person segmentation mask texture, and we also need to click alpha test. And it's a bit blocky around the edge, so I'm just going to bring this up just a little bit good now if I simulate the orbit you can see that's how it would work and that is pretty much it if I will now send that out to my device to give it a test one thing that I will need to do probably let me just have a look my textures are probably a bit too big um, I will tweak, tweak the settings now I will change that to Let's go JPEG. Let's go highest. I'll just see what they come down to. Highest. So this is why I like to bring them in at uh, 1024, just so then it gives you the the um, ability to be able to tweak them here. They've come down to what, three meg. That should be alright. I'll send that over and we'll have a look at it. Okay. Yes, works fine. Good terms. Segmentation's a bit dodgy, but it's okay. And for the second part of this tutorial, I'm just going to do just a basic panorama. I uh, start by just deleting the canvas there with the rectangle on it. I'm going to add in a plane tracker. Just insert that in. Now I'm going to make my panorama a child of that plane tracker. Let's zoom around. That's it. I just got to scale that up to make that a bit bigger. And you'll notice that as I scale, it sort of resets. So it's lost the minus that I put in the X. So once I've just scaled that right up so it doesn't clip, I'm just going to put the minus back in. So I'm going to set that to minus three. I'm just going to round these off to nice even numbers. And then three, and then three. And let's just check that out. Yep, working well. Now you can see that quality uh, from using the eight different textures is, is visible. 
I'll send that over to my device and then we'll have a look at it. Yep, so there it is in the device. And I'm just going to bring up a, a 1024 version here so you'll be able to see that as well. And that's the, the quality difference there between using just one 1024 texture and eight 1024 textures.